While watching this video, if you find it a little difficult or if you're new to P5.js, please check out my previous tutorials and follow step by step. Now we know how to draw three circles with for loop. Final step is giving some life to these circles, which means make a motion or animation of shapes. After that, it would almost look like motion graphics. As I mentioned in the previous section, you can move these circles by using the function called translate. Let's see what happens first when we write translate versus when we don't write translate. If you're already familiar with HTML canvas or CSS, you might have heard of this method. If you haven't yet, that's totally fine. I'm just giving out extra information because at some point I do want to deep dive into HTML canvas and vanilla JavaScript to control the canvas because ultimately that is what P5.js library is controlling behind the screen. Let's go back to reference page and read the description of translate function. To make sure we are on the same page, the coordinate of P5.js canvas looks like this. Left corner is 0, 0, x gets bigger as you go right, y gets bigger as you go down. FYI, this coordinate system is same with HTML canvas. When we draw a shape or do something with coordinates, the default position starts from 0, 0. When you start doing WebGL or 3D environment in P5.js, this coordinate system will get changed, so just be aware of that. First example code of translate function. Let's comment this out and see what we get. Our rectangle function's xy coordinate values are 0, and we know that our default coordinate starts from 0, 0. So this is where rectangle belongs. But when we use translate function, ta-da! Even though 0, 0 inside rectangle function didn't change, the shape is no longer at 0, 0. It's because the coordinate of this canvas is now moved to here. Due to translate function, this point 30, 20 is now 0, 0 of this canvas system. Let's look at second example. This shows what description explained about transformations being cumulative. So there is two translate functions here. The first translate function moves a coordinate system to here. And now in this word, 0, 0 is here. Then, second translate function moves the canvas based on current 0, 0. After the second translate function, our coordinate system is located like this. If you want to draw a rectangle up here or here, you would have to use minus values. Now the last example, this is going to be difficult and interesting. Also, this would be a good example to understand dynamic motions. In my final code, I use rotate function to rotate the circles, but in this example, they use translate function. And this is another possibility you can play around with. In this code, we see width and height inside translate functions. Width and height variables are system variables or reserved variables in P5.js Word. Just like frame count we talked about in the first video, you don't need to declare or define system variables like width and height. These are just given and P5.js already knows what to return when you use these. Let me give you an example with basic code. Here we created the canvas size of 400 by 400. Now P5.js instantly understand this and assigned each 400 pixel to properties called width and height. As the description says, if we don't use create canvas to explicitly set our canvas size, it will make the canvas default as 100 pixel. So console.log prints out width and height as 100. To get the center of canvas, write width divided by 2, height divided by 2. And next part. I'm going to skip details for now because it contains too many new things we have to learn. But if you want to take a deep dive, please remember that this p5.vector is a class. You can use this from angle function along with p5.vector. 
and this returns a vector which is an object that holds x and y coordinate values, just like you see in this console.log. Here, the rectangle is moving because millis function returns a current milliseconds value, which obviously changes every milliseconds. Since this canvas's coordinate is once moved to the center of canvas, width divided by 2, height divided by 2, it makes sense that this changing x-coordinate value allows the rectangle to move around the center. If you change this denominator to something else, it will render faster or slower. If you change the y-coordinate 40 to something else, it gets closer to or farther from our 0, 0 coordinate, which is again translated to the center of canvas. Next, we're going to learn push and pop. If you paid close attention to the description of translate function, you notice them mentioning them in the bottom. Let's see what happens first when we write push pop versus when we don't write them. Push function saves the current settings and transformations, while pop restores basically resets these settings. They are always used together. Right after push, you can change the style and transformation settings of the canvas, and after pop, you return to previous version of your canvas. When I first saw these, I didn't entirely know how to play with this, but certain computer science knowledge that I had back in my college years was pretty useful. So let me share just in case it helps you too. When you learn data structure or browser rendering, you'll probably hear this concept called stack. What I'm gonna explain now would be more similar to browsers call stack. If you're not aware of any of those, don't worry, I'm not gonna go too deep. If you wanna search more by yourself, I recommend you to look up in these keywords, JavaScript call stack, JavaScript event loop, and push pop stack JavaScript. Now this image will help us to visualize what's happening behind the screen. To apply this image to our case, I'll make some specific analogy. Let's say this empty stack is our browser's to-do list, which renders and draws a canvas. This blue square here is certain action that P5 asks the browser to execute. For example, fill the color or draw a circle. When the function push runs, this part of code between push and pop goes into the stacks of browser's to-do list. When the function pop runs, this action gets finished and no longer valid. Let's look at the first example. The circle in the middle is colored, but not the others. We could have written no fill, fill, and then no fill again, but instead we can simply use push and pop. Inside push and pop, it describes how to draw the circle in the middle, giving thick stroke lines to fill the color, move the coordinate, and draw an ellipse. And the pop makes all those drawing requests to disappear. After pop, it draws third circle, but all the settings of second circle, which was inside push and pop, disappeared because this part of code is basically popped out of to-do list. So the browser doesn't execute this anymore. Next is rotate, because in this tutorial, we ultimately want these circles to actually move and generate spiral animation. Let's see what happens first when we write rotate versus when we don't write rotate function. Also, I will show you how canvas changes when rotate function is inside or outside of push pop. There is a subtle difference when we write rotate outside and inside of push pop functions. Rotate is giving the angle value to the canvas to rotate the shapes. If we write rotate function outside of push pop, the rotation angle value gets accumulated and applied to all shapes, just like it says on the official documentation. So it seems like the shapes are rotating a bit faster. But if we write rotate function inside push pop, rotation angle gets reset after each for loop of drawing a circle. Also, when you move around rotate function based on my code, be aware that i variable is no longer defined outside of for loop, so you have to change the parameter value of rotate function. In addition, we need to pay close attention to translate function as well when we use rotate, because the shapes are always rotated around their relative position to the origin. 
and translate function sets the new origin that you want. So if you didn't explicitly call translate function, the canvas will rotate the shapes around the 0, 0 coordinate, which is the default origin of canvas. Rotate function rotates a shape by amount specified by the angle parameter. Based on the setting angle mode, this amount unit gets calculated differently. Default angle mode of P5JS is radians. By using function called angle mode, you can set the angle type of your canvas to either radians or degrees in P5JS environment. There are lots of system variables and functions related to this, so please look up these keywords in the reference page. Just a quick note, you'd commonly put values like 60, 90, 180, 360 for degree setting, and pi, pi divided by 3, 2 pi for radiance mode. Last but not least, we want to change the opacity of background of the canvas. Here, I initially gave only one parameter to the background, which generates gray value between black and white. If I give second parameter, the background function syntax understands that I want to pass in opacity value. Opacity or alpha value ranges from 0 to 255. And the more I make background color transparent, you see more traces of the circles as the canvas draws rotating shapes. This is because whenever a draw function runs, the background function, which we wrote as the very first line of draw function, gets executed. This means that background function paints the entire canvas. It basically erases all the circles and shapes at every certain milliseconds. Therefore, if we make that background color quite transparent, we can still see the previous shapes that previous draw functions drew on the canvas. Now, after four tutorial videos, we finally learned everything we need to make Apple Watch Activity Apps logo with no design, but P5 JavaScript coding only. Please go ahead and have more fun tweaking parameters of your functions and maybe come up with your own visuals. Also, please leave comments if you have any questions and I'll see you in my next video.